Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace. Welcome back. This is a podcast style show. We cover one topic. We cover it really in depth. This week we're talking about gender identity. It's a really important topic. And we've talked about gender a lot over this past week, how it came about, why it's still here, how it's actually seen inside of our brains, and how animals even have some semblance of this. And now there's really just one more place that we have to go. Why do we need gender? So what would a post-gender society look like? Let's say we were able to take gender and get rid of it. If we created it, then we can get rid of it, right? Do we need gender anymore? Do we need gender equality or do we need gender abolishment? Yeah, that's some powerful stuff. This is radical to be sure. But honestly, maybe it's better for everybody if we don't have these preconceived ideas about what gender is. Because if gender is a way to describe ourselves to others, what if we didn't have these shortcuts? There are places in the world where Western gender ideals are much more fluid. Think in Asia, there are places where it's absolutely okay for people to dress a different way than what is expected considering the sex they were assigned at birth. I know that some of you are thinking, this is not okay, gender isn't real, you know, it's getting a little hippy-dippy for me, a little too touchy-feely to imply that everyone should be able to define their own identities and their own expressions. And you know what, to be honest, sometimes I feel that way too. I'm a cisgender male. It's very difficult sometimes for me to always understand where everyone is coming from, but I am also proud to say that you can be whatever you want and I will try and understand you because I expect that you would try to understand me too, and this stuff ain't actually that new. It may feel that way because the internet has brought us more closely tied, but in ancient Egypt, they were also dealing with gender issues. There are statues of men all over ancient Egypt. If you haven't been, go, it's great. But these statues were mostly of pharaohs. Pharaohs were mostly men, but not entirely. There was one queen of Egypt named Hatshepsut. She was actually king of Egypt because she made all of her statues look male. She made the, the carvers of those statues, the creators of those statues, create male representations of her. She was a king of Egypt, a pharaoh. She even wore the false beard when she met with her subjects. Whether she was attempting to fit into a political culture or actually express a gender that maybe she felt it's hard to say, this was thousands and thousands of years ago, but they did have this gender expression that she changed because she felt that she needed to. This continued throughout history. There are many, many examples. Another one that I really liked was in 1877 in Sweden, Isabel Eberhard wanted to live like a man. She converted to Islam. She even joined an all-male Sufi brotherhood. They let her join even though she was, she was basically living as a man, but she was a woman. Obviously in 1877, she couldn't transition, but she was living as a man. Super interesting. Obviously, we need biological sex on some level because there's something to be said for knowing who can impregnate whom, whose job it is to bring one sex cell one gamete, and whose job it is to bring another one. Although, as science advances, there may come a time when we don't even need that. So if we don't need gender, and we don't need to know who's male and who's female, then we can actually get rid of all of these societal constructions. Research is ongoing to create offspring from two same-sex parents, and even three different parents to create a single fetus. This is being worked on now, and they're not that far off. If we have assisted reproduction, it can make it possible for individuals of any sex to reproduce with individuals of any other sex in combinations that they choose. This is from a book, Postgenderism Beyond the Gender Binary. The idea being that it's actually better because we can be more of ourselves. We can be more honest and we can find the person that truly makes us happy. That one person could be anyone, not just all the ladies or all the men. I'm going to lay this out here. I know it's a little weird. I've read all the Hunger Games books, and <laughs> I'm not embarrassed to say it, but throughout the story, Collins' depictions of gender in the future were so interesting, and they were so spot on. I mean, 
when people were walking through the Capitol in the Hunger Games movies, but also as described in the books, there were people who were blue-haired, there were people who were blonde-haired, there were people with earrings and nose rings, there were people wearing dresses and high heels, everyone was wearing makeup, and it didn't matter whether you were born a male or a female, you could express how you felt however you wanted, and no one seemed to judge anyone for that. That's really exciting, and it wasn't a breakdown of society. I mean, it was. It was the Hunger Games. But the capital itself wasn't a breakdown in society. Everybody seemed quite happy. We've already got so many gender boxes that the edges are blurred. And the more that we know about gender and the more we study it, the more boxes are going to be made. Eventually, we're just going to have to kind of recognize that there's only going to be one or two people in every box. Everyone is going to have their own experiences. They're going to bring different things to this gender discussion. In the books and movies, The Hunger Games as well, when you remove these things from those characters in this fictional drama, they were somehow diminished. They were lesser versions of themselves. They still had their, their passions, and they still had their excitements for life, but they weren't quite the same as described in the books or shown in the movies. And I'm not saying that The Hunger Games is some kind of post-gender you know, plan but it was kind of interesting to see how that played out. When people feel like their outside expression fits their inside identity, they're way more powerful, they're way more comfortable. That was not always shown in every series. I mean, my beloved Harry Potter series, on the other hand, totally gendered, barely people of other races, let alone people who were openly gay or someone who was agender and maybe didn't want to live as a witch or a wizard, but wanted, you know, some other pronoun, which a lot of people don't feel comfortable with. But when you think about it, it makes sense. Just because you feel that way, shouldn't you be able to express yourself that way? There are movements to create non-gendered language, non-gendered bathrooms, and there are places where that's being met with opposition, and that's understandable. It's hard to make change. But we're telling people that you can't live that way because it makes me uncomfortable, and that doesn't really fly. Gender forces us to pick one or many boxes, and why should we pick? Why should we have to pick? In a post-gender society, we wouldn't have to pick, and instead, each individual would have to do the work to find out what another individual loves, what their dreams are, how they feel about themselves, and how they're expressing that. Doesn't that seem kind of great, actually? Why would it make more sense for you to feel bad because I don't want to do the legwork? It seems kind of wrong to me, personally. Funnily enough, marketers and advertisers are learning more and more and more about us as we become more connected. And right now, think of it like a greeting card company needs made-up holidays, as well as they need regular holidays, because they need those boxes that you have to check. We need those broad cultural touchstones. But as we learn more about gender, just as we learn more about what that means for the card companies, we know that we actually don't need those. And if I want to send you a card, I can send you a card any day of the year. You don't need to wait for a holiday. And as we have more targeted ads, it's the exact same way. More targeted products. So why do we need pink for girls and blue for boys? You're going to target an ad specifically to that person. And gender is the same. As you know somebody better, you're going to know what they like. You're going to know their expression, and you're going to know, eventually, their identity. Everyone has their own individuality, and they're going to express it as they see fit, regardless of whether we like it. So we may as well accept it and try and understand it. Gender is something that we built for ourselves, and, and like anything that we build for ourselves, we can make it whatever we want. So hopefully... This helps you understand why it's important to try and do so. We've come a really long way over this, this episode, and I hope that uh, you understand gender identity more. I'm sure I didn't hit everything. I'm sure I missed a lot of stuff, and maybe I got some things downright incorrect. I really hope not. I tried really hard for all of you to make this as accurate as I can. You're all awesome for sticking around. Make sure you subscribe for more Test 2 Plus, and tell me what you think about this. You can either tell me in the comments, or you can come find me on Twitter at Trace Dominguez. I had a lot of fun researching this topic. If you need more Test Tube Plus, you can click here and watch any of our videos from this week. And make sure you check out another week's videos 
by subscribing or check out last week's videos about aliens if you can't wait. Seriously, we don't even know if aliens have genders. Think about that. We don't even get to that. Come back next week. We'll see you then. Bye.